as you could see from the presentation, uh, the Prix Voltaire is truly an international prize. And that not only because it's given by the International Organization of Publishers, but also, as you can see, it's a global prize. So far, it has been given to recipients in 11 different countries. There's no surprise when I say that Guy Minhai, who worked as a Hong Kong-based publisher and bookseller, who specialized in producing what you might call fast-moving political pot boilers that were critical of the Chinese leadership, through his mighty current publishing house and Causeway Bay bookstore, is the Prix Voltaire winner this year. As you also know, he was kidnapped by Chinese agents from his holiday home in Thailand in October 2015. He resurfaced in Chinese custody several months later, and following a period of doubt over his whereabouts, we know that he was snatched from a train in January this year. Guy Minhai has contributed to the free circulation of ideas. He's been participating in human rights conferences and also by sitting on the board of independent Chinese pen. His treatment at the hands of the Chinese authorities and also the treatment of other of his fellow publishers has had a chilling effect on Hong Kong's once vibrant and audacious publishing industry. In a better world, we would have had good game in high with us here in Delhi at this conference to re receive the Prix Voltaire. We could then have been able to share his comments and thoughts that he probably would have expressed a bit different if he had been free. As we all know, he is not here. He is in detention in China and has to speak as told by his captures. Guy Minhai's daughter Angela was not able to come to Delhi to receive the prize, but she participated in our conference on a video link yesterday, and she is with us tonight as well. There were multiple nominations for Guy Minhai, and the IPA Freedom to Publish Committee has decided to award the 2018 Prix Voltaire to Guy Minhai as an honor to his bravery in continuing to publish despite the risk involved. So, dear Angela, would you like to comment the prize on behalf of your father? Hello, everyone, um, and thank you so much, um, Kirsten, for um, the introduction and for inviting me to accept this wonderful and fantastic prize um, on behalf of my father. Um, so my name is Angela Guay, and uh, I'm Guay Minhai's daughter. Um, today, uh, I am extremely proud of my father's achievements, but actually, um, I'd like to begin by expressing my disappointment. So um, the talented and creative writers over at the um, manuscript division at the Chinese Communist Party didn't respond to my request for them to provide me with a script for this speech. So I'm afraid that a few words from me and from my perspective um, will have to do this evening, and I hope that's okay with you. Um, of course, in light of recent events, I could, I could use this time to talk about some of the other things that I'm feeling. But I don't suppose disappointment or any other words for that matter um, could ever adequately cover any of that. So um, instead, I'd like to take these few minutes to talk about who my father is as opposed to what happened to him. To perhaps give you a sense of what being awarded this prize means to him and um, what he might say or what he might talk about if he was here today. So um, my father has always been a storyteller. Um, as a child, I used to look forward to just walking places with him because he had um, a very rare ability to find little anecdotes around every corner that we would pass. Uh, he was born in 1964 
into a family which the Chinese Communist Revolution um, had treated rather unkindly. As a child, he was already severely nearsighted and needed glasses to see. Um, my grandparents managed to save up for a pair, but um, because of the cost of glasses relative to the family's meagre earnings, my father wasn't allowed to play outside with other children. In case, <clears throat> just in case the glasses would break. So instead he would stay indoors and read stories. In the 1980s, he studied history in Beijing. China was opening up to foreign influences for the first time in nearly a century. And my father and his friends explore this newfound freedom, not only through their studies, but also through reading and writing poetry about dreams of social change. When my father met me for the first time, uh, moments after I had been born, uh, I apparently grabbed the pen that he always carried in his breast pocket and pulled it out. He tells people that that's how he knew that, like him, I was going to be a writer. And I don't know about that, um, but he was the one who taught me how to use PowerPoint um, as a nine-year-old so I could build visual narratives and arguments. And he was my first critic when I started writing essays for school. He told so many stories um, and he enabled so many stories to be told. Even if my father was somehow right um, that I was meant to be a writer, um, I do find it incredibly difficult to do justice to his story. So um, let me move on to a little anecdote of my own that could perhaps illustrate it. Um, so I read Voltaire's Candide as a 16-year-old. Um, my teenage self, who I admit was wrong about quite a few things, read it as less of an outright rejection of optimism and um, more of a realistic um, or sceptical redefinition um, of its meaning. Voltaire, in my understanding, um, doesn't think that being a true optimist means believing that all is for the best in the best of all possible worlds. Instead, um, true optimism stems from the insight that the world is actually quite awful. Um, because, um, because of that insight, um, the, the possibilities then introduced that, um, that, things, can become, that, can, that things can become better. Um, and that also brings with it, with it an important will to make this happen. Um, and as Carnid says at the end, um, we must cultivate our garden. The reason I'm telling you this is that um, when I had the news that my father was to be awarded this award, um, it made me recall the, the one very particular conversation um, that I had with my father during the time uh, during his time uh, under residential surveillance in Ningbo um, before he was snatched again in January this year. Uh, and for obvious reasons, he wasn't able to recount um, in very specific terms what had happened to him and what his situation was. But he did tell me this. Despite everything that has happened, I remain an optimist. And I think that my father's version of optimism is perhaps precisely the kind that Voltaire describes in Candide. It's an optimism that, in the face of unimaginable cruelty and repression, still believes in change. And it's an optimism that isn't crushed by lies, force and humiliation. So I don't know what part of my understanding of um, this prize or what this prize means to me that makes my father a more worthy winner of it, um, his courage or his optimism. Maybe it's a bit of both, um, but I do think, however, that if my father was here instead of me, as he should be this evening, then he would probably say something um, in the spirit of Voltaire along the lines of we must cultivate our garden. Thank you.